good evening um, from London and uh, greetings to all the um, people who had found the time and found the importance of this lecture to join us. This is a very important and critical topic that we need to uh, discuss. And it's about the challenges in the delivery of surgical care in oncology in the low and middle income countries. Um, for those who probably do not know me, I'm called uh, Beatrice Wiafe Adai. I'm a consultant breast surgeon, the president of Breast Care International the Chief Executive Officer of the Peace and Love Hospital, the Chairperson of the Ghana Cancer Board, and the Chairperson of the Ghana NCD Alliance. I'm also um, an Executive Committee member of the International Breast Cancer and Nutrition Project, and also a Technical Committee member of the CCAN Kumasi Project. So um, we all know that um, surgical management of cancers are so important, but we, we also know of the challenges. So today we are going to go through these contents. We first do the introduction the burden of the problem, the challenges, and the approach, which is very important to me because as for the problems, we know. We know several of them. But what are we doing to improve uh, cancer surgeries in the low and middle income countries? So surgery is key in the management of cancer patients. In fact, the Lancet uh, Commission on Global Surgery recognized surgery as an indispensable component of global health. And there is an urgent need to increase the volume of uh, surgeries that is done in these low and middle income countries and also improve the quality of the surgery that is done. So surgery is used as the diagnostic tool, especially when you have um, soft tissue tumors, like you have breast cancer, you have prostate cancer, you, you need to do uh, core biopsies to be able to diagnose the disease and the subtype of the disease. And these aid in the management, the treatment, that the staging and the treatment of the disease. It's also as a curative measure. In fact, we are, most of our activities are geared towards um, diagnosing cancers early for meaningful treatment, which is cure. Sometimes we have to use surgery for palliative purposes, which is not what we want, but we know of the recent movement of metastatic breast cancer. A lot of breast cancer patients will end up in metastasis. And sometimes we need to do palliative surgery to reduce the burden of the disease, the tumor, and also to reduce or re, um, remove the suffering of the patients. Sometimes it's a preventive tool. And in fact, for most cancers, surgery is the only chance of cure or long-term survival. But unfortunately, surgery is not always available to many who need it, especially in the low and middle income countries. And this affects most African countries, some countries in um, South America, 
some countries in Asia. And these are things that we need to discuss and pay serious attention and improve the surgical care that is available. So our aim is to briefly uh, describe the problem, the challenges, different ways of improving surgery for cancers in the low and middle income countries. In fact, the incidence of cancer globally is on the rise. And according to GlobalCan, which is the uh, cancer wing of WHO, as in 2012, the global incidence of cancers was about 40 million patients. And this was expected to rise to 21 million patients by 2030. And the unfortunate fact is that majority of these rising incidence is expected to be in the low and middle income countries. The burden of non-communicable diseases increases as populations age and healthcare improves because that's the means by which we can diagnose most of the diseases. And most of us uh, have realized that the, <clears throat> the estimated life expectancy of most low and middle income countries have increased and so have the non-communicable diseases, especially the cancers. So as the population ages, we should expect more cancer cases. So I mentioned earlier that surgery is for diagnosis, for cure, for palliative care, and sometimes even as a preventive measure. But surgery is not available to many patients who need it in these countries. This is an unfortunate fact. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, and this is a $1 million question, are the low and middle income countries equipped to deal with roughly 10 million cancer surgery per year as estimated? And the answer here is categorically no. In fact, estimates show that over 95% of patients in the low income countries do not have access to timely and effective cancer surgery. Estimates show that not even 5% of patients in the low income areas have access to timely and effective cancer surgery. There are so many sources of this, and I've quoted some in our references at the end of the lecture. So how can we provide timely, affordable, and quality surgery to these millions of cancer patients per year that we are bound to receive in these low and middle income countries. And the key words are timely, affordable, and quality. The quality of surgeries should be very high. But we know that in most countries, most of the low and middle income countries, surgery is offered when it's rather too late. Patients do not report early. 
and we don't have strong systems in place which would help us to screen uh, the population and maybe get patients on time to do meaningful treatment. In most of these countries too, surgery is just not affordable because patients have to pay out of pocket. And we know the high levels of poverty in these countries. So even if the patient wants to have surgery done, even when the patient desires to be treated, to be cured of the disease, because of the high cost of treatment, a lot of these patients are not able to receive the, the care they need. And this is very pathetic. We need to look at our systems critically to be able to offer help to those who need them. Because if the patient is poor and has to pay uh, huge sums of money before getting the required treatment, then it's obvious that a lot of them will not get it. Quality of surgery is also something we need to talk about. And we will talk about this later on as we move on. Because we, if we don't have highly qualified surgeons, well-trained surgeons, surgeons who, um, who have the requisite um, equipment, to be able to offer the care that the patients need, then we, the surgeries in these countries will be lacking in quality. <clears throat> it's very important for us to make sure that the surgeries we are offering are not going to rather cause harm, more harm, rather than curing the patients. So it's not strange that we still have a lot of patients dying from cancer in these countries. On top of this, the economic consequences have also been studied and that the surgical cancer mortality losses are estimated to about 7 trillion US dollars per year with additional 400 billion from morbidity of the surgeries that are performed. And so you find, you realize that a lot of even patients will be refusing the surgeries because of the negative uh, stories surrounding some of these surgeries that are performed. Another major challenge with cancer care in the low and middle income countries is that of the stage at presentation. Cancers in the low and middle income countries often present at late stages when treatment options are limited. And we should ask ourselves the questions, why are patients reporting late? So many factors come into place. There are a lot of myths and misconceptions surrounding a lot of the cancers in our part of the world. And I'm a bit biased towards breast cancer. So let me use that as my example. A lot of women in Africa especially think that breast cancer is caused by witchcraft. They think it's a spiritual disease. They think it's an incurable disease. They think it's as a result of a case on a family, especially when there's a positive family history. And because of all these factors, breast cancer is still stigmatized. 
And so before the patient lands in the hospital, they might have moved through uh, several places, like the prayer camp, spending months and even ages in the prayer camps, years in the prayer camps. Some also resort to herbal treatment, not proving herbal treatment. Whilst the disease will be spreading in the patients, through the patient's lymphatic system and the blood system. So a lot of time is wasted during these periods when the women move from one prayer come to the other, one herbal treatment to the other. By the time they get to the hospital, the disease is already an advanced stage disease with distant metastasis either to the lungs, to the brain, to the uh, liver, or to the bones. The case fatality is highest in the low income countries for all cancer subtypes. And it's estimated to be as high as 75%. Three quarters of all cancer patients dying is too large a burden. So if we are to have a chance at decreasing mortality and morbidity from cancers, we must make efforts to downstage the tumor. While cancer screening has provided supremely effective uh, measures and outcomes in the high income countries. There are many challenges to scaling this up in the low and middle income countries. And most of these are related to finances or lack of finances and lack of awareness. Local solutions are needed to devise the optimal screening strategies specific to each low middle income country. So I always say that we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but we can't also swallow everything that is being done in the high income countries. We just have to look at best practices and bring them to our societies so that our people will benefit from the best practices that is occurring in these high income countries. We should also have um, good systems in place and to understand that it's always important to prevent the preventable cancers. It's, uh, a classical example is cervical cancer. If we will be able to uh, vaccinate our girls, I mean, cancer. Hepatitis B vaccines are available. So we could screen our people vaccinate the negative ones and have the positive ones under surveillance so that we don't cross infect each other because people who are positive are not aware and those who are negative are not aware and so we keep infecting each other and the cases of um, uh, liver cancers keep soaring we must look at which kind of screening we can even offer our people when we talk about breast cancer. It will be very naive for us to think that the low income countries can start all of a sudden to start doing uh, screening mammography as is being done in the high income countries. But we can do clinical breast screening. 
we have a lot of nurses in our communities. These community health nurses who go from uh, house to house to vaccinate our babies, we could retrain them into how to clinically examine women so that at least we will start getting the diseases early. These same nurses can be trained uh, on how to educate our people so that as they move, they will be educating our people, teaching them how to do their own breast of examination, a practice that is still relevant in our parts of the world. A breast self examination is so important in the low and middle income countries because we are still diagnosing papable lesions. We don't have screening mammographies. So, until we are able to get screening mammography established in our countries, we could train our nurses to be doing clinical breast examination. We could also train some of the nurses, <coughs> sorry, some of the nurses and physician assistants in the uh, district clinics and hospitals, train them how to do other fine needle aspiration or core biopsies. For us to start diagnosing the lumps in those remote areas because sometimes a woman has to travel for hours before she can get to a center where she can even have a diagnostic mammogram done. So these are all things that we have to look at. Uh, my next slide is uh, cases of advanced stage breast cancer inoperable. And I want to apologize for the graphic nature of the slides. In cases like this, even if you want to do palliative mastectomy, it becomes difficult for you to close them up. Doing um, palliative chemotherapy, because of the, the enormous nature of the tumor bedding, in most cases, you, you won't be able to achieve enough results for you to be able to uh, do surgery like topically. So we need to, you know, be more proactive, more aggressive in our uh, awareness creation exercises to get our women early for um, meaningful treatment to be done and which for we know that surgical management is one sure way that we can cure the women from breast cancer. What about the surgeries that are being performed? Are we utilizing our resources to the maximum benefit? We need to look at this because you can, even in the presence of inefficiencies, you can go to a clinic in a, a, a deprived community and they can have the best anesthetic machines, the best equipment, have diatomies and so on. But those people may not be well equipped to do the minimal surgery that they need. So we need to retrain our surgeons in these facilities where they already have existing resources and try to work as a team so that if in the um, an adjoining area or community they don't have the necessary equipment we could talk to each other and see how we can maybe mobilize the women to have the surgery in the centers who already have the equipment. Are these complex, complex operations safe? And we need to train our people. If they are well trained, then they can perform safe surgery. Can we improve the timelines 
of this and what about their short-term and oncologic outcomes. Several avenues of improvement exist here. And the question of quality comes in here because uh, quality, quality, quality is what we should aim at. Quality surgery, not just operating, not just doing um, uh, lumpectomies when you have huge tumors, for example, in a woman's breast, knowing very well that the recurrence rate will be very high for such a person. So in such a case, is the surgery really needed at that time? Maybe the woman will benefit from neoadjuvant chemotherapy to downstage the tumor before the lumpectomy will be done. And here, let me mention that when we talk about lumpectomy, it's not the lumpectomy for a fibroadenoma, but rather taking the tumor with a minimum of one centimeter of normal breast tissue. In this way, we are likely to remove the, reject the tumor and not leave some behind. The fact that uh, radiotherapy is not always available is also something we should think about when we do a breast conserving surgery or lumpectomy or wide local excision. The fact that we are preserving the breast for the woman makes it mandatory for the woman to have a radiotherapy. So if there's no radiotherapy available, then such surgery should not be performed. We should understand that such women go through a hell of time to uh, when they have recurrence, and it may not only be a local recurrence, but rather distant metastasis. So the global surgery for cancers is about the provision of timely, affordable, and quality surgery to these millions of cancer patients per year. Like many global health situations, there is no one solution to the problem. Here, I'm going to talk about some suggested approaches. And let's not forget but that we have stigma and fear for surgery in, in Africa. The stigma is surrounding um, mastectomy, especially in Africa, because the women do not have, want to have the defects in their bodies. And so we should also think of what we can do to, to if we cannot do reconstruction for them, then we should think about external prosthesis, which can be used. Uh, because if the woman knows that she can have something to dress up and feel whole again, she might be convinced to undergo mastectomy. Patients refuse mastectomy because they do not want their bodies to be disfigured. They also fear the effect of mastectomy on their relationship with their partners. And this is where reconstructive surgery is very important. A lot of um, uh, men in Africa, especially, divorce their wives when they undergo mastectomy. Some men even argue that a woman without a breast is no woman. And I always say that such women, men who will be saying such things, uh, excuse me to say, are also not enlightening themselves because their, their lack of awareness is not only on the part of the women. On the men, 
the part of men as well. And sometimes the men even think that the uh, breast cancer is contagious. So once the women have it, it means the man can also get it when they, um, he, you know, have intimacy with their wife. Something which is not true. So the ability to evaluate surgical margins intraoperatively is often not possible. Most low and middle income countries do not have intraoperative um, uh, surgical, uh, pathological, uh, you know, investigations available. So you cannot assess the surgical margins. And so if, and that's what I was saying that before we offer a breast conserving surgery, lumpectomy, radical resection of the tumor, a wide blocker excision, we must be sure that we, the tumor we are dealing with is not more than four centimeters. Or we should then downstage the tumor by giving neoadjuvants. If you want to still do uh, breast conserving surgery for the woman, and here too we should not forget about the multidisciplinary approach. We are talking about surgery, but we shouldn't forget uh, the pathologists because we need to also train pathologists. They are going to help us in diagnosis. They are going to help us in staging. They are going to help us in checking the margins and whether the patient needs uh, radiotherapy after your surgery, mastectomy or not. All these things are very important. The, uh, apart from the pathologists, we need the medical oncologists, we need the, um, the nurses, oncology nurses to help. We need the nurse navigators. We need to strengthen breast cancer survivors and other cancer survivors. Um, let me chip in here that prostate cancer is also stigmatized in a lot of um, African countries. And when you ask the men, their concern is that in the in the uh, society, a lot of people think that when a man is diagnosed with prostate cancer, or even sometimes when there's no cancer, when they have a uh, BPH, uh, people think that it's associated with impotence. So they don't want people to know that they have a problem with their prostate organ. This is also something that we need to do a lot of education to increase the knowledge of people about these diseases and the fact that if the person goes to the hospital early, then he can be cured of the disease. The continent needs to invest in the training of oncology specialists to improve outcomes, especially the surgical oncologists. We did some research in the Peace and Love Hospitals and this came out as a shocking news that more than 72% of all the patients who come in late had run away from one hospital or the other from mastectomy. It's not only mastectomy they run away from, they abscond from chemotherapy because they don't want to lose their hair. Some run away from radiotherapy, but those are very uh, small figures. But if more than 70% of patients um, run away from the hospital, they default uh, the surg their surgical uh, appointments because of mastectomy, then we need to do a lot about this. And that is where we see the strong effect of uh, survivors. Survivorship is very important because when 
people see a lot of women surviving breast cancer and men surviving breast cancer. It gives them hope. These survivors also uh, serve as peer navigators for the newly diagnosed patients. And this is what we do at Breast Cancer National and the Peace and Love Hospitals. We are utilizing the survivors a lot and it's very helpful. So please, if you are listening to me and you don't have a survivor association, try and form some wherever you find yourself. They are a very strong force to reckon with. So a major area where we can work on is training. Training for all the disciplines in oncology. And since we are talking about surgical oncology, we are talking about training the surgeons. There simply are not enough surgeons available to address the surgical needs of the populations. So we should take this as an immediate action. We should work on this as a critical um, endeavor. If we don't have enough surgeons, how can we cure most of the cancers that we come across, even when the patient has come early. Another thing too is when patients come to health facilities and they spend months within the facilities from one district to another district and to another region. And by the time they are uh, referred to the treatment center, most of it, the disease is beyond surgery or beyond cure. So we should be very serious about this, not to keep the patients unnecessary too long. We should make our referral systems swift and not be so bureaucratic so that those who need to be referred will not be kept in one region or one district when you know very well that you may not be able to offer the needed help. You may not be able to offer uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. You may not be able to uh, do a mastectomy in the place where you are. So why should we keep the patients for too long so that the patient who came in stage one by the time she gets to the treatment center, she's already a stage four disease. This is unacceptable, but unfortunately, it's still happening. So we need to have a multi-sectorial approach. The human resource from several different professions need to come together to address the problem. The primary data collection is very important. We, we don't have cancer registries in most um, low and middle income countries, and this is unacceptable. We need to know the burden before we can make a case out of it. We need to have our data in place. Let's, you know, let's involve the other um, resource persons who will be able to help us collect the data, analyze them, so we can present our case to the, uh, the people who can change policy, who can make some uh, important policy changes for us capacity building of medical staff and sometimes especially those who are in the deprived communities in smaller cities <clears throat> they are so overwhelmed by work that i'm sorry they are so overwhelmed 
by work that they are not even able to um, uh, learn new things. So we should think about building the capacity of our medical staff. I mentioned the, the even the administrators, the nurses, the physician assistants, the surgeons, pathologists, medical oncologists, um, all, all, all the aspects of medical uh, health, the health section. We should train them. Health education and awareness creation is very important. We shouldn't think that the surgery is the 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 most critical. The surgery that we have to do is the most important thing. We should educate the people and create awareness, and that will help us to diagnose the diseases early. Scaling up of screening programs, screening for cervical cancer, screening for breast cancer, um, other cancers, childhood cancers, things that we can do to help us to diagnose cancers early. Improving the surgical safety, safety. We've spoken about this on and on and on. Creation and implementation of public policy. And this is very important. We shouldn't take for granted that our, <clears throat> sorry, that our politicians, our governments, they know everything. No. In most cases, we have to bring the problems to their doorsteps. We have to kind of speak about the problems and we can speak about them well when we have the data to address our points. Adequate funding and especially in the low and middle income countries, we are always talking about lack of funding. But health is such a critical thing that we should understand that there should be funding for all the aspects of health. Awareness creation, screening, education, and prevention of the preventable ones. We need to do this. And also um, working towards reducing the things that can expose us to these cancers, like reducing uh, tobacco smoking, uh, including shisha, reducing alcohol consumption, lack of exercise, uh, excessive um, fatty intake of our diet, things that we do that predispose the population to some of these cancers. So we should have funding for these policies research and innovation, especially in Africa. Our tumor biology is different. We have different trends of diseases. So we should be ready to do research and to learn the nature of our disease. Let's take still breast cancer. Why do we have a lot of triple negative disease? Why do we have our cancer patients so young? And if we can do something about it, we need to research into our own disease and not only always refer to research that has been done in other countries. And let me here comment research institutions which are not in Africa, but are helping us to um, improve upon our research uh, capabilities. Uh, you know, we have a lot of experiences to talk about. The National Cancer Institute, Royal Master, uh, Harvard University, and a lot of uh, universities across who are helping us from European countries, IAC, who are helping Africa and the low and middle income countries 
to do research. Do not leave us behind. Let us research into our type of diseases. And I want to thank this um, uh, papers, I mean, these uh, authors for giving us the information to make our lecture today a rich one. At this point, I will thank you all and maybe wait for questions if anyone has some questions for me. Well, thank you, uh, Professor Adai, for your wonderful lecture today. Um, now I uh, ask uh, our attendees here, uh, this would be a great time uh, for any questions you'd like to come forth with. Yeah. So go ahead and if you have a question, uh, please unmute your microphone or you may text in the chat and we can answer any questions. Um, hello? Hello. Uh, thank you, Professor, for the nice lecture. Uh, I'm Samuel. Okay. I have a question. My question is geared actually towards the quality of uh, surgery. As we know, in Southern Africa, uh, I'm from Cameroon, so particularly we, yes, the number of general surgeons uh, train is still low, but uh, that of uh, primary physician is rising but the problem comes at the level of the education that is given to the primary physician as we know we are trained and uh, to perform some minimal uh, surgery like uh, general practitioner there for example they yeah. can uh, they can do appendicitis um, ts section you know they're trained mm -hmm. to intervene in terms of emergency. So they came across a lot of uh, uh, lumps, like uh, like yeah. Omar mentioned. And but the training also is not geared towards like emphasizing on the rising of uh, cancer burden. So most of the time we'll receive, uh, uh, like uh, when you are working in a tertiary hospital, you receive patients who have had previous surgery and no pathology, uh, pathology was performed. Mm. And uh, later on, it come, it's uh, found that the patient was having a, a cancer. So what mm. is actually being done at the level of the education of these uh, medical students who are going to, when they graduate, they go immediately on the field. Is there mm. not a way to actually work with the uh, medical schools to also emphasizing some of these courses. Yeah. Thank you, Samuel. It's a very important question, very practical. Unfortunately, most of the medical schools we have do not put a lot of emphasis on oncology. So some students may not even um, witness or assist any case of mastectomy or wide local excision or lumpectomy for a breast cancer patient. But when they go to the districts and the small cities, they are faced with these cases. And once the doctor is the only doctor doing all sorts of surgeries, he's tempted to do these surgeries there. And like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the necessary um, equipment, tools, then do not do the surgery. Because if you don't have pathology services and you remove a lump from the woman's breast, 
and most of the cases the the specimen is given to the patient that she should take it to the pathology in the city most of them just discard them they reach the dustbin and they throw away because they don't understand why they should uh, carry the sample to another place and go and pay money again. So we should try not to give specimen to patients to handle. And because of the rising cases of uh, breast cancer, for example, we should be wary of lumps that we remove from women's breasts. Um, most places, they don't have a mammogram. So you wouldn't even have an idea what the woman has uh, preoperatively. You don't have any preoperative uh, morphological diagnosis. So it's assumed that it's a lump in the breast. And so we need to uh, start talking about this. And let me commend Harvard Global Health for doing this kind of webinars. We can do it as often as we can. You can have my email address, send your questions, and let's discuss them. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, some doctors are so overwhelmed with jobs in the smaller cities that they don't have time to even go on the internet to learn something new. And we should also think of retraining on the ground so that the doctor will not have to travel for three years, five years somewhere, and after training will not even want to go back. We can um, look at avenues to teach doctors in their respective uh, places of work so that they can be able to do the surgeries safe quality, good quality surgeries with the equipments that they have available. And also arrange to have pathology services. I mentioned training of more pathologists. We don't have enough in Africa. So we should train more pathologists. And yeah, there are some pathology uh, organizations outside Africa in Europe, in America, that are ready to help African countries to train more pathologists or those who can even read uh, when we do cytology. They can read the cells, give you an idea of what lamp the person has. I hope I've been able to answer your question. The case in Cameroon is not peculiar to Cameroon. A lot of African countries are facing this same problem. And we need to do more training to get our doctors to do quality surgery in their respective hospitals and clinics. Thank you. Pleasure, Samuel. All right. Well, if there are no other for if you uh, have any further questions, you're welcome to uh, email me, and I can get uh, you in contact with her. Uh, send a message yeah. through the Talent LMS website. Uh, that'll conclude our second lecture of uh, surgical oncology webinars. Uh, thank you again, uh, Professor Adai, for giving us a great lecture today. Uh, we will post the lecture slides on the website soon, uh, if not already. And uh, please use the same link to attend the lecture 